kwa ajili ya wakati huu mwema nimetupatia uhai tumeona siku ya leo kwa hivyo tunasema ni asante tunasema asante asante karibisha mtu hapo nyumbani sema karibu kwa ibada yetu ya jioni ya leo ya sweet hour of prayer Amen. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kwa hivyo tuko live hapa kwa Nyokonyo Studios. Na tunashukuru Mwenyezi Mungu kwa sababu ya leo. Amen. Ambia mtu karibu. Karibisha rafiki karibisha jirani ili tuweze kuenenda pamoja praise the lord majina yangu ni pastor Mary Nyokonyo wa River of Life Christian Fellowship niko pamoja na wachungaji wenzangu siku hii ya leo kwenye platform hii ya Nyokonyo Studios ili tukaweze kuomba na wewe vile tulikuwa tumeahidi hapo kuanzia jana wale waliingia kwa mitandao yetu ya kijamii kwa Facebook tulikuwa tumesema ya kwamba leo ni siku ya maombi kuanzia asubuhi na kwa kweli tumekuwa hapa kuanzia asubuhi tukiomba na mahitaji ya wale ambao walituma mahitaji yao kwetu and we believe that God has answered our prayer amen kwa hivyo kabla ya kuendelea ningependa tu tukaweze kuomba ili tumwakilishe Mungu mali hapa akapate kuambatana nasi katika wakati huu wa maombi. Tuamini tuombe. Mtakatifu Mungu wa majeshi, tunakualika mara nyingine tena karibu katika ibada yetu ya siku ya leo. Maana wewe ndiye mgeni wetu anayetushindania na kutuwezeshea katika mambo yote. Bila wewe sisi hatuwezi. Maombi yetu na maombi ya wanao yanapowasilishwa kwako yaweze kukufikia na ufanyike jawabu letu jioni ya leo asante kwa yale maombi ambayo tuliomba juma lililopita na Mungu umetenda tunakushukuru na pia kwa juma hili tunaamini ya kwamba unaenda kutenda makubwa tena ya ajabu sifa na utukufu baba ni kwako sisi ni watu wako watumishi wako watoto wako wote tunakikabidi katika mikono yako ya kwamba Mungu watu wako wale hawaja kujua wacha ukawajulishe kwamba wewe ni Mungu na matendo yako ni ya ajabu na wale ambao wamekujua na wako na roho ya uoga ama wako na shaka pia wao baba ukajijulishe kwao ya kwamba wewe ni Mungu na watumishi wako ninaomba ya kwamba roho wako akawaelekeze baba kwa wakati huu mgumu ambao dunia yote inapitia watambue kwamba wewe ni Mungu na wakuabudu na pia waelekeze watoto wako kwa kwa wewe unayetuwezea na ni katika jina la Yesu Kristo tunaomba na hata kuamini sema amen we welcome you all our viewers distance is not a barrier we welcome you all welcome in the presence of God hallelujah Praise the Lord. This is a sweet hour of prayer. And I know that you are ready to listen from the man of God, our pastor. Pastor Harrison is here again with us. This week is is not like the other week. This is a new week in the presence of God. And I believe that he has more and more. We have been dealing with the spirit of delay in our lives and now it is over. Praise the Lord. We are embarking on our journey. No fear. We are now dealing with the spirit of fear that nothing is going to cause fear in your life. And this week I know that we are entering into our destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. So I want to welcome our brothers in our studios. Mtajitambulisha majina zenu kisha baadaye tumkaribishe mtumishi wa Mungu ili akatupatie neno kwa muda mfupi na tutaendelea. Amen. 
praise God. Amen. I'm Pastor Wamalwa Evans. Uh-huh. And I'm happy to be here. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome Pastor Wamalwa Evans is here with us. Welcome my brother. Johnstone. Amen. He is Johnstone Nicoshel. Welcome in our studios today. And now finally we want to welcome the man of God who is going to give us the word this sweet hour of prayer and I believe that you're going to be blessed. Praise the Lord. Stay tuned. Amen. Welcome man of God. Amen. Thank you very much for each and every person. Asante sana kwa kila mmoja wetu. I take this opportunity to appreciate the Holy Spirit. Nachukua fursa hii kumshukuru Roho Mtakatifu. And to appreciate all the angels that are here today. Na kushukuru malaika wote walio hapa leo. It is another privilege that God has given to us to Tunuku, be in the studio. Tunuku nyingine Bwana ametupatia kuwa katika vituo hivi so that we can share the word of God together. Ili tukashiriki neno la Mungu pamoja. Last week we were dealing with the spirit of delay. Juma lokuisha tulikuwa tunazungumzia kuhusu roho ya kuchelewa. And we have seen so many things God happening since that very day. Na tumeona mambo mengi yakifanyika tangia siku hiyo. We have seen people giving out testimonies. Tumeona watu na kusikia watu wakipeana shahuda about what the Lord did after that session. Kuhusu kile Bwana alifanya baada ya wakati huo. And I still believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. Na nataka bado kuamini kwamba Yesu ni yule jana na hata milele. When he did yesterday, alipofanya jana, he can do it today. Aweza fanya leo. He will still do it even tomorrow. Anaweza fanya hata kesho. And that is why we are here. Na ndio sababu tuko hapa to start together with you. Kuanza pamoja nawe. In our session of today. Katika ibada yetu ya leo. We are dealing with the life of Gideon. Tunashughulika na maisha Gideon and the Israelites. Na Waisraeli. And today our reading comes from the book of Judges chapter number 6. Na leo maandiko yanatoka katika Uamusi mlango wa sita. As Pastor Mary had uh, begun speaking about it. Kama vile mchungaji Maria alikuwa amekwisha anza kuisungumzia. I'm only building upon the foundation which he has already laid upon. Najenga tu kwenye misingi ambazo amekwisha ziweka. So Gideon kwa hivyo Gideon was the fifth judge of Israel. Alikuwa ndiye mwamusi wa tano katika Israeli. And God of Israel. Na Mungu wa Israeli. When he saw the condition and the situation the Israelites were in. Alipoona hali ambayo wa Israeli walikuwa ndani yake. He came with a strategy on how to deliver and save his people. Akaja na mpango makususi wa kuokoa na kuwakomboa watu wake. That is why when you read the book of Judges ndio sababu unaposoma kitabu cha uamusi you realize three things unatambua mambo matatu rebellion wasi punishment uh, ile gadabu ya Mungu and deliverance na ukombozi those are three things that you will find in this uh, book of judges hizo ni vitu vitatu ambazo utazipata katika kitabu hiki cha uamusi rebellion wasi punishment uh, ile gadabu ya Mungu and finally God delivers them from that uh, punishment na kisha baadaye Mungu anawakomboa kutoka katika ile ghadhabu so in the book of judges chapter number 6 na hivyo katika kitabu cha uamusi mlango ule wa 6 i'm reading from verse 1 because pastor Mary had begun from verse 12 na soma kuanzia mstari wa kwanza kwa sababu mchungaji tayari alikuwa ameanza na mstari wa 12 he says later on the israelites practiced what the lord considered to be evil so the lord handed them over to the uh, dom- domination of midian for seven years midians controlled predominated predominated throughout israel and because of midian the israelites went out to find temporary hiding places for themselves in the mountains caves and fortified places so as we read this book But tunaposoma kitabu hiki I want to begin by saying this. Nataka kuanza kwa kusema hii that the Lord of Israel 
Babwana wa Israeli so what the Israelites were doing Aliona kile wa Israeli walikuwa wanafanya The eyes of God were open to see exactly what these people were doing Macho ya Mungu yalikuwa wazi tayari kuona kile watu hao walikuwa wanafanya And when these people entered into the promised land Na watu hao hao walipoingia katika nchi ya hadi The Lord had prohibited them from practicing other things that were not of faith Bwana alikuwa amewasuia kujihusisha kwa vitu zingine ambazo zilikuwa za imani nyingine But finally after entering into the promised land Hatimaye baada ya kuingia katika nchi ya hadi Bible says they they had forgotten everything and instructions of God Lena sema walisahau kila kitu pamoja na maagizo ya Mungu. And they started doing evil things and worshiping idols in the presence of the Almighty God. Na wakaanza kufanya mambo yaliyo maofu na ibada ya, ya, ya miungu mbele ya macho za Mungu. They forgotten the good things and the salvation that God showed them in wilderness. Walisahau vitu vizuri na pia wokovu aliowaonyesha Bwana katika jangwa. And so it is the nature of human being to forget so quickly the things that God has done in his life. Kwa hivyo ni asilia ya mwanadamu kusahau kwa haraka vitu ambavyo Mungu amevifanya kwa maisha yake. So when God saw that that Israelites were practicing what was considered to be evil. Ah hivyo Mungu alipoona watu hao wa Israeli wakifanya kile ambacho kilikuwa kimetambulika kama maofu. The Lord handed them over to their enemies. Hivyo Bwana akawakabidi katika maadui zao and so the enemies of israelites dominated them na hivyo maadui wa israeli wakawamiliki wao they overpowered israelites wakazidi wa israeli and so israelites became slaves to these people hivyo wa israeli wakawa watumwa kwa watu hawa it was not the will of god haikuwa ni mapenzi ya mungu for these people to be under the hands of medians ili watu hao wakae katika mikono ya wamidiani so that they can suffer ili wakaweze teseka but it was by their own choice lakini ilikuwa ni kwa uamusi wao god created man with volition of choices ah mungu akamumba mwanadamu na akaweka uamusi kwake so out of that volition you choose either to serve god or to serve idols hivyo katika ule uamusi unaweza fanya uamusi wa kumtumikia ya Mungu ama miungu. So when these people entered into the promised land they had forgotten about everything in God. Hivyo watu hao walipoingia katika nchi ya hadi walisahau kila kitu kuhusu Mungu. And so at times God uses such a like problem to bring attention of his people back to him. Wakati mwingine Mungu atumia shida kama na hiyo ili akaweze kupata wazo la watu wake kumrejea. God allows problem and suffering so that he can get your attention. Mungu anaruhusu shida na mateso ili ukaweze kumrejelea. Because he had spoken to them several times. Maana alikuwa amenena kwao mara kadhaa. But they never gave an ear to listen. Lakini hawakumpatia sikio. But when he wanted their attention, na alipowahitaji wao, he allowed the enemy to come and destroy what gave them comfort. Na aliruhusu adui aje aharibu chochote kile ambacho kilikuwa kimewapatia starehe. He allowed problem and troubles in their life so that they can remember God. Aliruhusu shida na mateso kwa maisha yao ili waweze mkumbuka Mungu. And so out of that, na hivyo to kanana hiyo it forced them to go back to Jehovah ikawalazimu kumrejelea Jehovah so what am i saying here hivyo ni nini ninachojaribu kusema hapa when israel entered into the promised land israel ilipoingia katika nchi ya hadi the israelites lost sight of her identity israel wakapotesa kile kitambulisho chao they lost the sight of their identity walipoteza macho ya kitambulisho yao as the covenant people under god's kingship kama watu wa agano katika uh, katika utawala wa mungu these are the people of god hawa ni watu wa mungu they are supposed to live and operate as the children of god wanapaswa kuishi na kufanya kazi uh, kama wana wa mungu but they forgotten their identity 
lakini walisahau kitambulisho chao they started identifying themselves in idols walianza kujitambulisha na miungu and immorality na 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 na, na, na uabudu sanamu that made god to come down and show them that you have gone astray na hivyo ikamfanya mungu kushuka chini na kuwaonesha kwamba mumeenda kinyume so when god saw all these things happening hivyo mungu alipoona mambo haya yote yakitukia they planned but they cannot feed on it. Ah, walipanda mimea na hawangeweza kukula hizo mimea. They do their things but they cannot uh, be satisfied. Wanafanya vitu vyao lakini hawawezi ridi suffered. Waliteseka mno. And they remembered God. Na wakamkumbuka Mungu. They remembered there is God of Israel. Wakakumbuka kuna Mungu wa Israeli. Who can help us? Ambaye anaweza tukumbuka. To come out of this problem. Toka katika shida hiyo. So in those days, katika siku hizo, when these people were uh, going through this uh, situation. Watu hao walipopitia hali kama na hiyo. The Israelites. Wa Israeli. They remembered that we can get a gain help from god wakakumbuka kwamba twaweza pata msaada tena toka kwa mungu so what i want you to understand is this hivyo ninachotaka wewe ufahamu ni hii that when you fail to know who you really are uh, kwamba unapokosa kujitambua wewe ni nani hasua and whom god has made you to become na mungu amekufanya kuwa nani you will lose a lot of benefit that you are supposed to be enjoying utapoteza faida zilizo nyingi ambazo ungefurahi kwayo God was the protection of Israel Mungu alikuwa ni ulinzi kwa Israeli God was the provision to the Israelites Mungu alikuwa ndiye mpeanaji kwa Israeli He wanted them to know that he himself was the one providing for them Aliwataka kutambua kwamba yeye mwenyewe ndiye alikuwa anapeana kwao But what happened Lakini nini ilifanyika Israelites lost faith in God Wa Israeli wakapotesha imani kwa Mungu And they became self-centered desire Wakao wa tu ambao wanajipenda wenyewe that made them to find themselves in so many crises ambaili wafanya kujipata kwa hali gumu sana so when god saw what was happening na hivyo mungu alipoona kile ambacho kilikuwa kinatukia he came up and raised a leader ali mama na kuinua kiongozi who is called gideon ambaye anaitwa gideoni the one he wanted to de- to use to deliver the children of israel from that quagmire yeye ambaye alitaka atumike kuwakomboa wana wa israeli toka katika shida ile and so god comes and appear to uh, to to gideon hivyo mungu anatukia hapa na anamuonekania gideoni in the person of an angel katika sura ya malaika so that he can speak to him and make him know what he is after to do ili akanene na yeye na amsaidie kufahamu kile kinachompaswa kufanya bible says god does nothing without sharing with his prophets biblia inasema kwamba mungu hafanyi lolote kabla kushiriki na nabii wake so he came and shared with gideon hivyo akaja na akashiriki na gideon but i want to bring to your attention this thing lakini nataka kuleta katika ufahamu wako jambo hili when god is choosing gideon wakati mungu anam teua gideoni gideon is coming from a bal family worshipper uh, gideon anatoka katika uh, kikunda ama katika jamii ambayo inaabudu miungu za bal the father was the one engineering and building the altars of bal babake ndio alikuwa mwenye kujenga uh, zile madhabahu za bal and so this can show you how these people were very far away from god na hivyo hii yakonyesha namna watu hao walikuwa mbali na mungu yes they are israelites yes ndio wao ni wa israeli but they are now worshiping bal lakini sasa wanaabudu miungu za bal instead of worshiping god badala ya kumwabudu mungu when people fell away from the will of god watu walipondoka kutoka katika kutaka kwa Mungu when you fall away from the path of righteousness unapotoka katika njia za haki and start worshiping something that is not god na kuanza kuabudu kitu ambacho si Mungu it provokes the anger of the almighty god inavutia hasira za Bwana Mkuu and when god saw that these people were worshiping Baal na Mungu alipoona kwamba watu hao wanaabudu miungu za Baal it provoked him into anger and he acted immediately ikavutia hasira sira zake na hivyo aka 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 aka, 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 aka yake kwa haraka and so these people 
They had forgotten the God of Israel. And identified themselves in the worship of Baal again. The very thing can happen even to the believers today. When the believer fails, uh, fall away from the will of God. When they sway from the path of God and they start worshiping something that is not God. It can also provoke the anger of God upon your life. These are the people who saw miracles. They saw things that God did for them in wilderness. But they forgotten so quickly and began worshiping Baal began doing things that were displeasing to God. That is why I am here today. Say that although they did all these things the love of God never fed away from them. Bible says in the book of Romans that God demonstrated Romans chapter 5 verse 8 God demonstrated his love unto us in that while we were still sinners Christ died for us so although these people were doing so evil the love of God was still upon them because they were covenant people with God and God will keep his covenant and all the promises he made with Israelites so God looked upon Upon the earth and upon that generation and he saw he can use a man called Gideon although he comes out of Baal worship it doesn't matter where you are born the grace of God can still find you there it doesn't matter your family is the family of witchcraft sorceries and all these kind of things. The love of God is greater than that witchcraft. The love of God is greater than that sorceries. Some people have gone to an extent of worshipping the marine spirits. Some are spending a lot of their money giving to witchcraft and sorcerers so that their life can become better. I want to tell you you are just wasting a lot of your money because God is still waiting for you and he loves you so much. He's still needs you to come back to your sense and then choose him as your savior. Ngalipo angali anangoja uje so God came to Gideon so that he can use Gideon as a deliverer. And as a servant of God said uh, on Sunday, maybe God is waiting for you to bring deliverance to your family. Deliverance to your marriage. Deliverance to your children. No matter what you have done, the love of God surpasses that sin. When Jesus Christ came, he came and dealt with the sin once and for all. There is no sin that is greater than what he did on the cross for you and me. The Israelites had committed a lot of sins, but God raised 
raised Gideon so that he can bring them back to himself. Lakini Mungu akamuinua Gideon ili awarejeshe kwake. So that they can again come back to them uh, to, to God their maker. Ili tena wakaweze kumrejelea Mungu ambaye ni muumba wao. So it doesn't matter. Hivyo haijalishi. Even if your family has raised an evil altar. Hata kama jamii yako imeinua madhabahu ya miungu. Even if they are worshiping snakes and all these kind of things. Hata kama wanaabudu nyoka na hata hizi vitu zingine. The grace of God is sufficient to save you from that situation. Neema ya Mungu yatosha kukuokoa toka katika hali kama hiyo. God never came to die for the good people. Mungu hakuja kufia wale ambao ni wema. He came to die for the bad people. Alikuja kafia wale ambao ni wabaya. So that he can change them and make them the light of the world. Ili awabadili na awafanye kuwa mwanga wa dunia. That is why he's looking for these people. Na ndio sababu anawatafuta watu hawa. God does not want to see anybody dying as a sinner. Mungu hataki kuona yeyote anakufa kama mtenda dhambi. The plan of God was to save each and every person so that all of them can be saved. Mpango wa Mungu ulikuwa ni kumuokoa kila mmoja ili wote waokolewe. And he gives these people an opportunity again. Na anaopatia watu hawa fursa tena. So the angel of God came and spoken to Gideon. Na hivyo malaika wa Mungu akaja kanena kwa Gideon. He introduces Gideon as a mighty man of valor. Ana anamtambulisha Gideon kama mwanaume mkubwa wa vela. I read the Bible and I realize that vela was a place that raised heroes in the Bible. Ana soma Biblia na nakuja kutambua kwamba vela palikuwa ni mahali ambako palinua watu wakubwa. One of them is Jephthah, a man who came from Vela and we see what he did in the Bible. Mmoja wapo ni Sujana, anaitwa Jephthah, mtu aliyetoka katika Vela na tunamjua katika Biblia. And so when Gideon uh, is approached by the angel of God, na hivyo Gideon anapo uh, ongeleshwa na malaika wa Mungu. He tells Gideon you are a mighty man. Anamwambia Gideon wewe ni mtu mkubwa. A mighty man. Mtu mkubwa. God sees you as a successful person. Mm. Mungu anakuona kama mtu aliyefanikiwa. When people looked at Sarah they saw Sarah as a barren. Uh, watu walipomtisama Sarah wakaona Sarah ni yule tu tasa. But God saw Sarah as a woman who is going to become a mother of nations. Lakini Mungu akamuona Sarah kama mwanamke atakayekuwa mama wa mataifa. When people looked at David they saw David as a boy, a shepherd. Uh, watu walipomwangalia Daudi wakamuona Daudi ni kijana mchungaji. But when God is calling David he says I have found a man after my heart. Naye Mungu anapomuita Daudi anasema nimekwisha mpata mtu ambaye anatoka ndani ya moyo wangu. Stop underrating yourself and how people think about you. Koma kujidharau mwenyewe na vile watu wanafikiria kukuhusu. You are greater than more more greater than the way you see yourself. Wewe ni mkuu zaidi ya vile unavyojitisama mwenyewe. And the person who is speaking to Gideon na mtu anayezungumza kwa Gideon is the one who made Gideon. Gideon. So he knows the potential that is inside him. So whom do you think you are? Never despise yourself. Gideon saw himself as useless because of the problem he was in. Don't define yourself based on the problem or the circumstances of your life. Usijitambulishe mwenyewe kulingana na ile hali unayopitia katika maisha. Because God sees you in a different perspective. Maana Mungu anakuangalia katika viwango vilivyotofauti. So he's asking Gideon, you might man of vela. Anamuuliza Gideon, wewe Gideon mtu mkuu wa vela. God had predetermined whom Gideon will become. Mungu alikuwa amekwisha jua Gideon atakuwa nani. Your success was already predetermined by God. Ufanisi wako ulikuwa umekwishatambuliwa na Mungu. Your ministry was predetermined by God. Huduma wako ulikuwa umekwishatambuliwa na Mungu. He wants you to know who you are. Anataka ujijue wewe ni nani. He wants you to understand yourself. Anataka ujitambulie ujitambue mwenyewe. Stop identifying yourself with the problems. Acha kujitambulisha na hizo shida. Stop identifying yourself with the worldly things. Acha kujitambulisha na vitu vya humu duniani. You are greater than those 
those things. Wewe ni mkuu zaidi ya hizo vitu. So he's telling this guy you are a mighty man of valor. Hivyo anamwambia jamaa huyu wewe ni mtu mkuu wa vela. God saw this man as a hero. Mungu akamwona mtu huyu kama shujaa. As a person who is going to bring solution to so many uh, problems in the life of his people. Kama mtu atakayelete suluhu nyingi katika maisha ya watu walio wengi. But Gideon replied. Lakini naye Gideon akajibu. Sir, if the Lord is with us. Ah, kwa sababu bwana kama Gideon yu pamoja nasi. Then why has all this happened to us? Basi mbona haya yote yatukia kwetu? Why are all bad things happening to me? Mbona vitu vyote vibaya vimefanyika kwangu? I have prayed. Nimeomba. I've fasted. Nimefunga. I'm faithful. Nimekuwa mwaminifu. I've been doing everything according to the word of God. Nimekuwa nafanya kila kitu lingana na mapenzi ya Mungu. Why are these things still happening? Mbona haya bado yanafanyika? But we have seen the reason why these things were happening. Lakini tumeona pia sababu iliyofanya haya kutukia. They had forsaken God. Walikuwa wamemsahau Mungu. They started worshiping idols. Wakaanza kuabudu miungu. They mixed themselves in a mess. Wakajichanganya kwa uofu. And that is why God allowed all these things to happen. Na ndio sababu Mungu anaruhusu haya yote kufanyika. But he has allowed that problem so that he can get their attention again. Lakini ameruhusu shida hii ili akaweze kupata uh, watu hawa tena kumrejelea. And he's telling Gideon. Na anamwambia Gideon that Gideon listen. Kwamba Gideon isikize. You are a mighty man. Wewe ni mtu mkubwa. But Gideon is raising a debate. Na Gideon sasa analeta mjadala hapa. Asking him how can you tell me all these things when we are suffering? Akamuuliza mbona waniambia haya yote wakati tuwapitia mateso? Where are the miracles? Miujiza ziko wapi? The signs and wonders and the things we had from our ancestors. Ishara na miujiza vitu tulizosikia kutoka kwa mababu zetu. He wanted to see all those things. Alitaka kuona hivyo vitu vyote. But remember what the people who are seeking the miracle signs and wonders and they are not in the right will of God. Na ukumbuke watu wanaotafuta miujiza na ishara hawapo sawia na Mungu. If they are not walking right with God. Kama hawatembei sawa na Mungu. They have been told to sow seed. Basi wameambiwa pande mbegu. They have been told to give big money wameambiwa watoe pesa zilizo mingi they have been told to give sacrifices wameambiwa watoe saka and these people are not right with god na watu hawa hawatembei sawa na mungu they are mixed up with idols wamejichanganya na miungu they secretively worship the baal wanaabudu miungu za baal kisiri and they come on in church na wanakuja kanisani and give much money na wanapeana fedha zilizo nyingi they are told god is only waiting for your money wanasema Mungu angoja tu hizo pesa zako. Oh you need to give much money. Unahitaji kutoa sadaka mingi. You need to buy this and this and keep it in your house. Unahitaji kununua hii na hii ukaviweke kwenye nyumba yako. Take this water. Chukua maji haya. It is your blessing and miracle. Ni baraka yako na mujiza wako. When you are not right with God. Ukiwa haupo sawa na Mungu. All those things are useless and they cannot bring salvation and deliverance. Vitu hivyo vyote ni vya utupu bure na haviwezi leta kombosi kwa shida yako until you turn away from those worship of baal hadi uondoke katika ibada ya baal that is when god can hearken to your cry hapo ndipo mungu atasikia maombi yako so when These people saw the problems was mounting. They came back to God. And they started crying unto God. They cried to God. And God heard their cry. And God sent a deliverer. May the Lord send an angel. The messenger whom he has prepared. Inside your family. Ya at the place of your work. Yako ya kazi, in your marriage. Yako, wherever you are right now. Sasa may hivi. the Lord send his messenger. The one whom he has prepared. Yako, to deliver your life. Yako, to deliver your business. To yako, deliver your education. Hayo yako, to deliver your children. Yako, in the name of Jesus. They never knew. 
unajua how this will happen vile haya yatatukia but god had a plan kinae mungu alikuwa na mpango god has a plan of your life mungu ana mpango katika maisha yako god has a plan of your children mungu ana mpango na watoto wako no don't lose hope usipoteze tumaini because he's working out it out maana anaishughulikia and he's going to do something peculiar na anaenda kufanya kitu cha kipekee after all these things baada haya yote Gideon was not that sure. Gideon hakuwa na ule uhakika. Because of the fear that was inside them. Kwa sababu ya hofu na uoga uliokuwa ndani yake. The fear yake. that was inside them. Uoga uliokuwa ndani yao. Let me speak about the principles of fear. Wacha nishungumze kidogo kuhusu kanuni za uoga. The more things you surrender to fear. Vile unajikabidi kwa uoga zaidi. The more things you surrender to fear. Vitu vingi unavyoviweka katika uoga. The more things you fear. Na hivyo ndivyo vitu vingi sana unaogopa. So I repeat again the more things you surrender to fear. Narudia vitu vingi ambazo unavikabidi kwenye uoga. The more things you fear. Na ndio vitu ndivyo unakuja kuogopa vitu vingi. So I know you fear so many things because you have given yourself to fear. Najua unaogopa vitu vingi sana maana umejikabidi kwenye huo uoga. Principle number 2. Ya pili, the extent to which you surrender to fear. Zaidi ya vile unavyojipeana kwa uoga when you extend your fear in something unapozidi uoga wako kwa kitu the greater your capacity for fear basi kiwango chako cha kuogopa kuna inaongezeka so many people have gained the capacity of fear in them watu wengi wamepata ule uwezo wa kuogopa ndani yao because they have extended in fear maana wameongeza kiwango cha uoga they have surrendered themselves and extended into fear wamejikabidi wenyewe na ku zidi katika viwango vya uoga that is why today we are today we are dealing with the spirit of fear na ndio sababu leo tukabiliana na roho ya uoga israelites were afraid of midian wa israeli wakaogopa midiani sana god used that fear to cause them know that he is god mungu akatumia ule uoga ili wakaweze kujua kwamba yeye ni mungu when they heard about the midianites they they ran away and Wa- hid themselves in caves waliposikia kuhusu wa midiani wangekimbia hofu ingewaja waende kwenye mabango kujifu, kujificha hiding from their enemies Wakif- jificha tokana na maadui wao that was not the plan of god from the beginning hayakuwa mapenzi ya mungu hayo tangia mwisho the principle number three about fear kanuni ya tatu kuhusu uoga the greater your capacity for fear uh, vile kiwango chako cha uoga the more you increase the power of fear in your life basi ndivyo pia unaongeza kiwango cha uoga katika maisha yako the greater your capacity for fear The more you increase the power to fear. Uh, vile kiwango chako cha uoga inaongezeka basi ndio pia unapata uweza zaidi wa kuogopa. And let me say this again. Acha niseme hii tena. The more you increase fear in your life. Zaidi ya vile unaongeza uoga katika maisha yako. The more is the intensification in perpetual carnality uh, uh, na ndio zaidi ya pia unaongezeka kuenenda katika umwili you start living and walking as a carnal person unaanza kuishi na kutembea kama mtu wa umwili and so fear is an, an, an emotional sin uh, kwa hivyo uh, uoga ni dhambi ya kihisia you just feel like you are afraid unahisi tu umeogopa why are you afraid mbona umeogopa because you have seen a problem kwa sababu umeona shida mbele because you are going through some challenges maana unapitia changamoto in the bible katika biblia the bible has recorded several times uh, biblia imeelezea mara zaidi mara mingi about this word fear kuhusu neno hili uoga and it says fear not na anasema usiogope 365 times uh, mara 365 anasema usiogope and that is to tell you na hiyo ni kukuambia every Every day don't fear. Kila siku siogope ndugu. What is making you to fear? Nini ya kufanya kuogopa? Why are you afraid? Mbona umeogopa mpendwa? Why what is making you to fear? Ni nini hii inakufanya kuogopa leo? God is there to give you courage. Mungu yuko pale kupatia ule ujasiri. To strengthen you. Kukutia nguvu. And make you understand. Na kukufanya kufahamu that, that problem can end. Kwamba shida hiyo yaweza kufika mwisho. That challenge can end. Na 
hiyo changamoto yaweza kuisha. So he says Hivyo anasema that when you fear kwamba unapoogopa you cannot make it. Uwezi faulu. So Gideon was afraid. Ivo Gideon akaogopa. When he heard that he's the one whom God is going to use. Aliposikia taarifa kwamba yeye ndiye Mungu anakwenda tumia to bring deliverance to his people. Kuleta ukombozi kwa watu wake. He was afraid. Aliogopa. But God lakini naye Mungu prepared him psychologically. Akamtayarisha kimawazo physically, kimwili, emotionally kihisia, to believe that he was with him. Kuamini kuwa alikuwa pamoja na yeye. So God God did all things. Hivyo Mungu akafanya vitu vyote to make Gideon have confidence that he's going to win the battle. Kumfanya Gideon kuwa na ule ujasiri kwamba anakwenda vishinda vita. So as we are going to deal with the spirit of fear today. Hivyo tunapoenda kukabiliana na roho wa uoga leo. I want you to know that the battle does not belong to you. Nataka ufahamu kwamba vita si vya kompendwa. It is not by your might nor by your power. Si kwa uweza wala kwa nguvu zako mpendwa. It is by the spirit of God says the Lord of hosts. Ni kwa roho wa Mungu asema Bwana wa 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 wa, wa, wa mamlaka. God is ready to fight that battle. Bwana na uwezo wa kushughulikia shida hizo. Do not fight for yourself. Usijipiganie leo. Do not engage into that battle. Usijihusishe kwenye hizo vita. Give it to God. Ziachie Mungu. He's going to fight it for you. Anakwenda kupigania wewe. It was not Gideon who was going to fight. Hakuwa Gideon ndiye ange pigana vita but god was going to fight for gideon lakini mungu alikuwa mpigania gideon god chooses uh, wicked things uh, mungu anafanya uamuzi wa kuchagua viumbe vilivyo vidaifu to shame the strong things vikaibishe vile vyenye nguvu gideon saw himself as a wicked ch- a person uh, gideon akajiona kama chombo daifu mtu mudaifu but god used the weakness in him so that he can show his strength naye mungu akatumia ule udaifu wa ke ili adhirishe nguvu zake to defeat strong men to defeat strong men awashinde wanaume wenye nguvu that assignment hiyo kazi is not based on your strength haipo kwenye nguvu zako when god gives you an assignment mungu anapokupatia kazi he does not let you use your own human power akupatii ule uwezo wa kutumia nguvu zako za mwanadamu but the bible says the spirit of god came upon gideon na biblia inasema roho wa mungu akaja juu ya gideon that word came upon is a verb that means to clothe somebody with a garment. Ah hilo neno kukuja kwa Gideon inamaanisha ni kumfunika mtu na vasi. And so God clothed Gideon with the ability of fulfilling that calling. Hivyo Mungu akamfunika Gideon na uweza wa kutimiliza uh, kile alichokuwa namtuma kufanya. So it was not Gideon. Kwa hivyo hakuwa Gideon. It was God in Gideon. Alikuwa ni Mungu katika Gideon. To defeat the Midianites. Kuwashinda wa Midian. To defeat the Amalekites. Kuwashinda wa Meleki. And to bring glory to his name na kuleta utukufu kwa jina lake today leo as we are here live today tunapokuwa hapa katika mitambo hizi i want to tell you nataka nikwambie this is the time hii ndio wakati of prayer wa maombi we want to deal with the spirits of baal tunataka kukabiliana na zile roho za baal all the idol worshipers wale waabudu sanamu all the satanic forces bila uwezo wa kishetani every hindrances bila vizuizi we want to pull those foundation down tunataka kuvifuta hizo misingi chini so that we can raise an altar ili tukainue madabao bible says bible nasema when a uh, gideon was told to destroy the altar of baal a gideon alipoambiwa avunje madabao ya baal he did it overnight alifanya usiku so when he woke up, the, the people woke up in the morning watu walipoamka asubuhi and realized that the altar has been destroyed wakatambua kwamba madhabahu yamevunjwa they discovered that gideon was the one doing this wakatambua gideon ndiye alikuwa anafanya haya they went to his father and said see what your boy has done wakaenda kwa babake gideon wakasema eh itisama kile kijanako amefanya but what amazes me is this kinachonishangaza ni hii the reply of his father majibu ya baba ya gideon said 
If Baal is God, akasema kama Baali ni Mungu. Why has he failed to defend himself? Mbona amekosa jitetea mwenyewe? Why has he failed to defend himself? Mbona amekosa ameshindwa kujitetea mwenyewe? And I remember the Elijah. Nakumbuka Elijah. When he called uh, down the fire. Alipo patana na moto. To destroy the altars of Baal. Alipoita moto kuvunja miungu za Baal. And listen to this. Na usikize hii. If Baal cannot defend himself. Kama Baal hawezi jitetea. It means he is not God. Ah, inamaanisha yeye si Mungu. We have a God who is greater. Tuko na Mungu aliyemkuu. We have a God who is powerful. Tuko na Mungu aliye mwenye nguvu. Who can overcome the Baal spirit. Anayeweza kushinda roho za Baal. That demon that is threatening you. Ilo pepo linalo kukutatiza. Those witches and sorcerers. Hao wachawi wanaokutatiza. The people that are worshiping idols and you are afraid of them. Ah, watu wana Abudu miungu ama mapepo na unawaogopa. Let them know that we are worshiping the God of Israel. Na watambue leo kwamba tunamwabudu Mungu wa Israeli. And he's going to deliver you na, and me. Na anaenda kukukomboa wewe na mimi. So that his name can be glorified. Ili jina lake likatukuke. Your identity is in Christ. Kitambulisho chako kiko kwenye Kristo Yesu. When you know who you are. Unapojitambua wewe ni nani. And what God has imparted in you. Na kile Mungu amekiegeza ndani yako. You will never be afraid. Hautasalia mwoga. You will become courageous. Utakuwa na ule ujasiri. Don't just seek God when you have problems. Usimtafute Mungu mpendwa ukiwa na shida. But seek God at all time. Mtafute Mungu nyakati zote. When things are good and when things are not good. Mambo yakiwa sawa na mambo yakiwa hayapo sawa. In season and out of season. Katika nyakati na wakati usio nyakati. You need to seek God. He is your confidence. Your helper. And is going to do it for you. Thank you very much. As we prepare to enter into the session of prayer. Shalom. Amen. It is getting hot and hotter. I don't know where you are. But I thank God because I'm seeing many people are watching. Praise the Lord. And many comments are getting in. Praise the Lord. And I believe that you are getting blessed. Hallelujah. I feel like standing up and cheering my God. Because he is a great God. Hallelujah. I don't know about your God. I know you are serving Yahweh. It is good to serve Yahweh. Because if you are not serving Yahweh, the real God, you may be serving Baal without knowing. Praise the Lord. So it is good to serve the most high God. Hallelujah. He is going to fight for us. He who fought for Israel slumbers not. He sleeps not. He is there to fight for you and me. We are overcoming. No more fear. I'm seeing people saying no more fear. No more fear. And I really like it because we are getting somewhere. Praise the Lord. I felt like stopping the man of God and saying this topic has to continue next week because it's getting hot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if you are getting me right. This topic has to continue. This topic has to continue because somebody has to come out of that darkness. You need to praise God. You are a, a royal priesthood. You need to praise God. You are a priest. You need to offer your sacrifices before the Lord and to overcome that spirit of fear. We are dealing with it. Hallelujah. And next week we are still here in this platform. This is a post-corona platform. Oh, we are not looking at that corona. We are looking at God. We are looking unto him who is able to do exceedingly, mightily, Above, above what you can think or even ask what you can imagine through his power. And this power is bestowed in you. Praise the Lord. This power is inside you. Be ready to make the power of God work in you. I feel like asking the man of God a question because one of my brothers and I know that my brother you are there watching us right now. This was the question that was, it was an, a piece of advice. This brother of mine said, praise God, Dada Mary, I need some advice from you. Nikona shemeji wangu mumoja, mwenye anasema, wazi, 
ataniua mpaka imani yangu imepungua sijui la kufanya licha ya kuwa biblia inasema he can even quote the scripture biblia inasema in 1st corinthians 15:25 ya kwamba mungu yesu atakanyaga maadui wako wote this brother can really quote the scripture is he really using this i want you to say something to our brother welcome man of god it is getting hot if you have your question post it we are here for that question amen one of the things that i would like to say is bible says that so many people they quote the bible but they don't live according to the power of that mm -hmm. word and so you may have so many scriptures but still die as a sinner still leave us a, a weak vessel because you have not allowed that word to become your life mm -hmm. so what you need to do is yes paul when paul was preaching he said the very word that we are preaching to you is the same word that we were preached to mm -hmm. and we mix this word with faith mm -hmm. so that man is missing faith let that word be mixed with faith and then believe in promises of God. God said he will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He's going to fight your enemy. When you believe that promise and that word becomes your faith and your life, then it gives you the ability to see things in God's way and to overcome that battle. Amen. But if you look at your enemies and then you are afraid, it means you do not know the power of the God you are trusting in. Hallelujah. We thank God. Our brother, wherever you are, Brother Gershom, I believe you have heard that. Because alikuwa nasema, uoga umeningia. Nimeingiwa na uoga. The fear of man. The more you fear things, you become a slave of them. Hallelujah. That is what the servant of God is telling us here. The more you fear, you become a slave of them. Then what amazes me is that Gerishom is a man and he's fearing a woman. <laughs> Elijah feared. Elijah feared. And even he ran away. <laughs> he disappeared into the bush. Unless the spirit of God visited Elijah and returned him back. So we have so many Elijahs even today. Oh my God. God help us. Give us the ability and power to overcome the spirit of fear. And I know that we are in the right way. We are going to overcome it. Hey, we are still having more, a little bit of time here. Post your questions wherever you are. If you have a question, many people are watching. Nilam Isa, you are saying amen. Evelyn Kabari, you are saying amen. And again, also, we have our number, our prayer number, our prayer line number. You can call us, but not now. You can call us, then we will still pray with you. Amen? Yes. The man of God is still here. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bado tunaendelea. Kuna mtu wapa mesema ana watch from county 001. Endelea kututazama na nashukuru ya kwamba watu wengi wanatutazama. Ningependa nipewe simu ila ambayo naeza ona na ayo comments. Maana hii yangu naona ni kama inanisumbua kidogo. Nashukuru mwenyezi mungu. Maana tunaendelea. Bwana Yesu wa sifiwe. Man of God, I'm coming back to you. You have said. Thanks a lot, my hubby. God bless you. You have said. That God allows problems to make us remember him. So sometimes people do forget about God. Say something, man of God. So sometimes people forget about God. That's why God allows problems. Then we start crying, saying, oh, mungu wa meniacha, mungu wa menisahau, na kumbe ni sisi, tumemsahau mungu. Karibu sana. When God uh, made Israel as a nation, mm -hmm. he wanted to use Israel as a, an, an example uh -huh. to other nations. Mm -hmm. So that is why he wanted them to become unique and very different from other people so that he can use them to evangelize sure. and make these people know that there is a God of Israel, the one who is different from the gods they were worshipping. Mm -hmm. But 
the time when God was expecting a lot from these people, mm -hmm. they turned away from the path of God and from the true worship of God and they started living like other people. They wanted to live like other people, doing things like other people, speaking like other people, mm -hmm. dressing like other people without knowing that they are peculiar people. They are chosen generation. Mm -hmm. They are priests of God, the representative of God on earth. And now when God saw that he was angered, he wanted them to realize that they are not supposed to live. The Bible says that although we live on, the, uh, on this earth, but we are not of the world. Mm -hmm. So he wanted them to know that they were having a mission. And the mission of these people was to make the people know the blessedness of God and also to understand the true God of Israel. Amen. Yeah. So there is a God of Israel. And other nations also have their own God. Do not mix with up with the worldly nations. Know your God. And knowing your God will cause you or will make you to identify yourself, the person you are. You are the mighty man of Vela. Praise the Lord. Here we are. I wanted to ask our brother, Nicoshel. Somebody is asking, how will I know if I'm in the right path or in the right platform? Because the man of God have said, we are buying anointing oils, we are giving offerings, thinking that we are in the right path of God. How will somebody identify that I'm not in the right path? I need to come back. Because here, Gideon was hiding without knowing that it is a spirit of fear. He was to come out and defend his nation. But now he Asking himself, oh, I am the young one. I am the, my tribe is the, the, the smallest one in Israel. How can I go and fight this enemy? We need people like the tribe of Judah that is known in praising God and they win their battles. The tribe of Naphtal, the tribe of Levi. Those are the tribes mentioned up there. But now my tribe, this is Benjamin. A young man, a young son of Jacob, how can I go and even stand before my brothers? You can remember the time that Samuel was going to anoint David. When he saw Eliab, he said, now this is the man. I think Gideon was looking and comparing himself that I am very small. My tribe is very small. We don't have even a number that can get out and fight these people who are coming to us like an army. This is a united army. These are Amalekites, men of East. These are, are Midianites joined together as an army to come and fight the Israelites. Now Gideon is asking himself, how can I know that I'm in the right path or this is the right time for me to go and defend my brother. Say something, Brother Nicochel. Welcome. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Mary. Yes. Uh, how do you know that mm -hmm. you are, it is your right time? It is eh? my right time. Yes. How do you know that you are right with uh -huh. God? Uh, I'm chosen. Uh, uh, I'm called. You are called yes. by God. Okay. At times, uh, kuna watu wanaweza fika mahali mm -hmm. wakuja wakati wangu wakondoka umefika. Yes. But we are serving a God who always, our, 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 our pastor has just said, mm -hmm. kwamba, before the Lord does anything, you always speaks to his yes. prophets. Mm -hmm. I want to believe that the Lord will speak to somebody to come and convince you that it is your right time. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord will still communicate to you yourself. Mungu wetu ni mungu anayesungumza. Mm -hmm ata kusungumzia na bila shaka yeye ni Mungu ambaye anathibitisha kile ambacho amesema kwa hivyo wakati wako wa kubarikiwa Mungu akikusudia uh, wewe mwenyewe utakutana na hizo baraka utaona tu wakati wako umefika na pia bado atatuma mtu atakaye kuletea ujumbe tunasikia uh, Mungu alipotaka kutum, kumtumia uh, this man of God ambaye tunamzungumzia Gideon mm -hmm. bwana Yesu asifiwe alimtuma malaika kakuja uh, kuleta ile confirmation. Uyo mungu aliyemtuma malaika, bado mbaka leo yeye, anaweza kumtuma mjumbe, akuje atibitishe, kwamba it is your right time. Uh -huh. It is your right time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And also, to add on that, or to continue asking you to go deep and deeper, 
I'm not saying as men do say, prophet, go deep. No. Uh -huh. I want you to go deep according to the word of God, not according to your own words. Okay. Now I want us to go deep. Here you are. You have said it well and I know that my viewer has heard you. How will I know that this, what the man of God is saying? Because at times it takes time. I can remember there in the book of Judges when Deborah prophesied about the victory of the children of Israel. It took like seven years for them to overcome and have that rest that God said. It took them like seven good years. And you know seven years? We have already voted. We are waiting for another vote. And again plus two years. That is too much. If you are waiting. We are men. Sometimes you get tired. Sometimes you get overwhelmed with the situation. You can even let it go. How will I know that it, whatever the man of God is saying is true? Amen. Uh, my people perish due to lack of uh -huh. knowledge. That is the Bible. Mm -hmm. For us to believe that what the man of God is speaking is right, mm -hmm. We also go to the word of God. Amen. Kila na chosema kinaenda sawi ya naneno la mungu. Aha. Kama halipo sawa na neno la mungu, mm -hmm. basi hicho tunakia chilia. Mm -hmm. Tunapimanisha kila nasema na kile neno la mungu linasema. Amen. Basi kama kila mesema iko sawi ya naneno la mungu, mm -hmm. basi hapo ndipo tutaweza kujua kwamba what the man of God is speaking is right or it's not right. Hallelujah. You have heard it from the word of God. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sio kwa maneno ya ndugu yetu ni neno la Mungu linasema katika kitabu cha Hosea ya kwamba watu wangu wanaangamia kwa kukosa maarifa. Bwana Yesu asifiwe kwa hivyo ni vizuri wakati ambapo tunasungumzia ya kwamba you are a millionaire. Yes I know I am a millionaire. Bwana Yesu asifiwe hata nikianza kuhesabu zile pesa nimetumia tangia nizaliwe mimi ni millionaire lazima niwe nimekula mamilioni. Na sasa haya mamilioni yale mungu wanasema. Je ya nambatana na neno la mungu. Tutajua kwa matendo yao ya kwamba neno la mungu. Linasema kweli na maneno ya vinywa vya watumishi. Mbwana Yesu asifiwe. Kwa hivyo sio kila wakati. Mtumishi ya kikutabiria. Na unasema haa siku hizi watumishi wa mungu wa wanasema. Tuwapana. Angalia kama inambatana na neno la mungu. Na neno la mungu ni manuali ya maisha yako. Vile neno la Mungu linasema You know I was amazed when I was talking to my teacher Pastor Harrison and saying oh this week we are talking about Gideon then he asked me who is Gideon I said Gideon is written in Judges he told me no you are the Gideon uh -huh. I said no pastor I am just Mary from Huruma our studio is very small it has not grown to that. At least it can be seen like with the 50 people or a hundred people. He told me, no, it begins with you. So inaanza na wewe. You are the Gideon of your family. And I want you to stand because of your family. Defend it. Protect it. Na leo ni kawa natafakari vila mbavyo wana wa Israeli walukua wanatembea. Mungu akambia kuna kisasi siju kama si kupata hilo andiko siju kama ni kizazi cha Gad ambao walikuwa wakuwe the other side of Jordan Mungu akawaambia kwamba lazima mpeleke wenzenu kwanza wafike ndipo samurudi kwa hivyo kuna nafasi kwa ajili yako ya kwamba Mungu akupatie na kisha baadaye uondoke uzindikishe ndugu yako pia apate ndipo sa ukuje usettle wewe ni Gideon inuka mpendwa Usikuje ukakana ukanyamaza. Ni vizuri wakati mwingine hata kama haujui andiko liko wapi lakini tafakari Mungu atakuletea. Neno lake tafakari ya kwamba Mungu, mimi kama mwanadamu nyumbani kwetu napaswa kufanya nini atakuelekeza katika andiko lake. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kwa hivyo tunaendelea kama uko na swali lako tafadhali. Ninangojea maswali na tuko na nambari zetu nafurahia kuona ya kwamba watu wanatazama. Tichi obuti unasema kwamba fear is a demon. I rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And you finish by saying amen. Aha, it is gone. David Gax unasema kwamba I refuse to fear what I do not know. So sometimes people fear what they don't know. 
Many a times we think people fear what they know. Man of God, can you say something? We fear what we do not know. Many a times we think we fear what we know. I fear this man because he's very fat. But sometimes also, people fear what they do not know because fear is a spirit. It's in you. Welcome, man of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, most of the time, I normally tell people that fear mm -hmm. is sin. Fear is sin. It has graduated because from a spirit to sin. Because it's something we are that uh, may lead you astray. Uh -huh. Fear may make you not to reach your destiny. True. Because uh, when we, we look at uh, the true word of God, we are told that if you allow fear to remain active in your life, mm -hmm. it will take hold of your thoughts. Now, if something has taken hold of my thoughts, yes. then it means I cannot think independently. Hey. I can do anything without knowing. Sure. I can go uh, I can choose to travel or to, uh, I can choose to walk a pathway that I do not understand. Mm -hmm. I can decide to live an immoral life. Oh my God. You know, so it's something that is, it is sinful. It makes me sin because of fear. Because if I fear that uh, this mama here wants to kill me, mm -hmm. then because I'm not going to make decisions independently. Mm -hmm. I may decide to look for something so that I can arm myself that whenever she's going to come against me, I have something to defend myself. Mm -hmm. I, leave, uh, I leave God and go for things that do not have life to protect me. So that's sin. Fear uh, can paralyze your forward momentum. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I want to buy a car. And I fear that my mother, my stepmother is going to bewitch me. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to buy this car because I fear my mother is going to bewitch me. Mm -hmm. So I'm controlled by this fear. And sometimes this, my, my stepmother is having good thoughts, is happy that now we are going to have a car in our in, family. in our family. Mm -hmm. But because of fear, I do not. And I, I, I lay all my claims upon her. Mm -hmm. So this fear is something that can, can make unimaginable sins in our lives. Hallelujah. So we cannot live in this fear. Because look, when uh, Jesus feared, to, to, uh, to go and die and face the death. He feared because he, this fear came into Jesus mm -hmm. because this fear is a sin that wanted to divert Jesus from mm -hmm. the right pathway that he had come to, to accomplish in our lives. Yes. You know, Jesus came to accomplish a certain mission for the whole world. But fear came into him. Remember in Isaiah 53. Mm -hmm. We are told that because of his death. We were to live. Because of his stripes. We were healed. But now because of this fear. Jesus uh, therefore. People could not be healed. It's true. People could not be alive. So this is something. That is more of sin. And therefore we need to avoid. And that's why. God, to, um, to Joshua, he told him, do not fear. Amen. Let the word, this, this word of God be, be part of you. Amen. Let it not depart from you. Amen. Because it is something that can only help you yes. to conquer. Amen. To accomplish the mission that I'm sending you Amen. to. Amen. So what you mean, man of God? Fear kills even our progress, our success. 
you know, our destiny. It destroys totally. Everything. It destroys. Mm -hmm. Because if at all we are going to concentrate on fear, mm -hmm. then we cannot accomplish anything in Amen. our lives. And be it spiritual, be it uh, physical, True. be it emotional. True. You are coming up. I was to say this. In nature, Christ was to fear. But in the spirit, he allowed the spirit, the will of God to be done. He said, let your will be done. Because Christ chose to listen to the voice, to the of, voice of God. God. Amen. So, which means we fail because we do not pay listen. attention to the yes. voice of God. Amen. Because at when we fear, when fear comes, many voices yes. are being heard yes. in us. Yes. So it's our, our, our good time to search and know which is the voice of God. Yes. And Hallelujah. what I would just add is that mm -hmm. in most cases, yes. we do not work right with God. In most cases. My so whenever we hear mm -hmm. that there is something, you know, uh, the third part of my sentence is that it's a forgets your God-given destiny. Uh -huh. There is a God-given destiny, destiny yes. and there is your planned destiny. Mm -hmm. So you find that because of fear, mm -hmm. God is leading you somewhere, but you fear. It's, this fear suffocates it. It makes that plan not to breathe. And whenever there is lack of breath, then it means there is death. Sure. So uh, we should walk right with God. We should not care about who is against us. Mm -hmm. As long as, because the word of God is, if God is for oh, us, hallelujah. who will be against, against us? Who is going to stand against Ooh. you? Hallelujah. Who is going to stand against your plan of destiny? No Who is happen. going to stand against your God-given destiny? Remember, the Israelites passed through so many struggles mm -hmm. in, the, in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. There are so many tribes that stood against them to fight them. Mm -hmm. But remember, they did not stand against the God-given destiny. Uh -huh. They did not stop them from reaching the destination that God had prepared for them. True. So as long as you walk right, sometimes mm -hmm. it could reach a point whereby you cannot walk fast as the way you started. Mm -hmm. Because maybe there is a point where God is warning you. Mm -hmm. There is a point whereby God is correcting you. Mm -hmm. And when God is correcting you, listen to his voice. Hallelujah. Walk right with God and you are going to be successful. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God. We thank God. Amen. Mama Lea from London, we thank God because of you. You are preaching from London. Fear is lack of faith. If one lacks faith, fear is inside. Praise the Lord. Mama is also preaching for us. Thanks a lot. God bless you, Mommy. We love you. I saw Papa somewhere also said amen. Papa also is with us. Papa Moses, we love you. God bless you. Lydia Wanyonyi is saying, may God send his angels to deliver my marriage. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Your marriage is delivered, my sister. Watching from number 10. God be with you. Hallelujah. Candice Dopez is saying, oh, learning more. From you, great servants of God, I reject that spirit of fear. Today, fear, you are finished. In Jesus' name, we do not spare you in our marriages, in our lives. You are no more to be seen. Hallelujah. Here we are. We are learning more. More. We are learning more. Mercy, Darrell, you say amen. Fear is a demon. I rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, but you are saying that. God bless you. We are rebuking it. It has no portion in our lives. Nilam, you are saying, God, please make me understand myself and my destiny. People need to understand themselves. As Gideon understood himself, that he is a mighty man of valor. 
Praise the Lord. Mighty man of Vela. And the man of God said, Vela is a place where great men were generated. Eh? They came from Vela. Men like Joash. Women like Mary Nyokonyo. They came from Vela. Hallelujah. Amen. Prophesy to yourself. They came from Vela. Teach your boot you're saying as Sister Mary. And Sister Mary, sometimes when I sleep at night, I find myself nashtuka without a dream, but just comes once as if I was jumping from somewhere. A time I sleep backward, as you can sleep off, a stamp backward. Kindly let me know what this means. Man of God, Pastor Harrison, have you understood that? So that you can answer our sister, say something. Pastor, have you understood it? At times our sister is asleep. Mm. Oh, where is it? My goodness, it has disappeared. I think... Um, Check for me where it was. Just uh, So that she can receive her help. We are here for you. You got it? Anashtuka. Anashtuka ni kama alikuwa meruka kutoka mahali from somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Na si ati amekuwa kwa ndoto. Anashindwa ni nini na inamurudisha nyuma. Mm. Inaweza kuwa inamurudisha nyuma kimaisha. Hatuwezi tukajua lakini anasema kwamba it takes her backward. Or it uh, She sleeps backward. She sleeps and she, yes. okay, she moves backwards. Mm -hmm. In um in most cases, you find that there are dreams uh, that um, she's a lady. I, 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 um, uh, according to the statement, she's a lady. Yes. Yes. Some she's a lady. of my sisters uh, encounter these uh, dreams so much mm -hmm. about uh, you find uh, some things happening to your life. And you feel, uh, even sometimes you wake up and feel that maybe this is because uh, it is because of this dream that I'm not moving forward, that I'm not accomplishing something. Some dreams have no significance, have no physical significance in our lives. But there are some spiritual dreams that God sends as uh, warnings into your life. But when it comes to such like things, what I want to assure you or what I want to reassure you in life is that just walk right with God. Because there is only one thing that can help you identify yourself, who you are, where you are, if at all you walk right with God. But just uh, dreaming, there are some dreams that are, have significances in our lives. But there are some uh, dreams that do not have any significance in your life, your spiritual life. Because you should not capitalize on just sleeping back in your dream. Mm -hmm. But rather, wake up and pray to God so that he can bring you back. He can make you bounce back to your normal, to your uh, destiny that God has planned for you. Mm -hmm. There is a God planned destiny for you. Mm -hmm. But you are concentrating so much on this dream that it keeps on recurring. It keeps on coming back. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you are concentrating on it so much. Maybe because uh, uh, when you were growing up, somebody was telling you that when I do this, I'm going... But the spiritual meaning of a dream is totally different from the physical meaning of your dream. Mm -hmm. So stop concentrating on sleeping back. I want you to step up your spiritual faith. Worship God. Pray to God. Because God has a purpose in your life. But because of your uh, physical things that you are going through, you want uh, to capitalize on them and still stand still instead of moving to your God-given destiny. There is a God-given destiny. Even if the devil is fighting you, even if there are 
plans by the devil for you to uh, to topple you. God has a, uh, a God-given destiny for you. Amen. Fight in prayer. Fight it spiritually. Amen. I don't want you to fight with your uh, physical eyes or physical words or your physical thoughts. I want you to fight it spiritually. Amen. Be right with God. Amen. Because God has a divine purpose in your life. Amen. Amen. Yeah, add something, yeah. Pastor Harrison. Uh, one of the things that the book of Ecclesiastes says is so many people have dreams based on what they have undergone through the whole day. The whole day. So because you have a lot of things in your head and you are thinking this and thinking this, definitely when you go to sleep you will find yourself having dreams. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, what I want to finish by saying is that uh, God says... And I want that sister who, who, who uh, posed that question to Tichi listen Obutu. to this. Obutu. Yeah. I want, I want him to, to listen to this. That the Bible says God will give his people the good sleep. And they will sleep mm. well like babies. Like babies. Yeah. Our sister, you need to sleep like a baby. Though you are not a baby. But you need to sleep like a baby. I know you are a grown-up person. But unalala kama mtoto. Unajua mtoto huwa ugopi. Yeah, analala, najua mama yake yuko anamchunga. Baba yake yuko anamchunga. Kwa hivyo hata wewe unalala kama mtoto ukijua malaika wako wanakuchunga. Yesu Kristo yuko, roho mtakatifu yuko, Mungu baba yuko. Na unalala kama mtoto mdogo. Aliye na security Tosha. Amen. God bless you so much. Kwa hivyo kufikia pale, naona ya kumba mda wetu umeenda zaidi. Mda wetu umeenda zaidi na tunataka tuingia katika maombi. Mana hatuondoki bila kuomba. Mbwana isu wa sifiwe. Najua ya kwamba kuna watu wengi sana wametuma masuali yao. Hatuta weza kuingia kwa hayo yote kwa sasa. Wewe endelea kutuma maombi yako. Kuna dada mmoja pa mesema tumombe biyashara yake haifanyi vizuri. Tutakueka katika maombi ya siku hii ya leo na mungu atakutendea. Biyashara yako itaenda vizuri kwa jina la yesu. Ondoa uoga katika hiyo biyashara. Mana nasema ya kwamba wale watu wanakuja kwa hile biyashara ni wakukopa tu. Hawakuji kununua. Wanakuja kukopa. Na vile ndugu yetu amesema usiende kutafuta tangible thing ya kuweka pale kwa biashara yako eti wale watu wanakuja wakuje wakinunua Bwana Yesu asifiwe tafuta roho mtakatifu ambaye haezi akashikwa hata na waganga ama wachawi Praise the Lord tafuta Yesu Kristo na damu yake tosha ikapate kukutetea pale katika biashara yako Haleluya Leo tunatafutana na Mungu tunatafutana na roho mtakatifu Tunataftana na nguvu za mwenyezi mungu katika maisha yetu. Hatutaftani na wanadamu. Hatutaftani na vidude, vidude vya kuweka. Yo unapata watu wamevaa ring zingine sikuizi za color red, sio white, sio, sio, sio gold ama silver. Wanafaza color red, color green, color maroon. Mungu akaweze kutusaidia. Ili tukaweze kuona waminifu wake, ulio katika neno lake katika maisha yetu. Amen. Kwa hivyo mungu awabariki kufikia pale. Ningependa ya kwamba sasa tuende katika kipindi cha maombi. Many people are watching and I thank God because of you who has taken your time to watch us and listen to the man of God. Anapo tu patia neno la kuondoa uoga katika maisha yetu. And I believe that next week we have another hot topic for you. Usikae mbali. Wiki ijayo. Wednesday a time like this. Tutakuwa hapa kwenye studio zetu. Tukieneza injili ya kweli. Ili watu wajijue. Na wamjue mungu. Ya kwamba usiwe unasungumza kuhusu Jeremiah. Huye likuwa Jeremiah. Na jaye wewe Jeremiah waleo. Jijue kama Jeremiah waleo. Jijue kama Mary waleo. Ili ukaweze kupanda. Ukaweze kuvuncha. Ukaweze kungoa. Ukaweze kuinua. Kwa utukufu wa jina la buwana. Kwa hivyo tunaingia katika maombi.
tunataka kuondoa roho wa uoga katika maisha yako katika biashara yako roho wa uoga kapate kuondoka katika jina la Yesu Kristo na naona mtu ametuma hapa support yake Mungu akapate kukubariki na akutie nguvu kwa ajili ya kazi hiyo unayoifanya Mungu akubariki Tuma maombi yako kwenye simu yetu ya ofisi ama simu yetu kwenye mitandao yetu ya kijamii na Mungu atapata kukubariki Tuko na wewe katika maombi Dada Rose Ogola tuko na wewe katika maombi wakati huu Mungu ainue hiyo biashara. Hautaogopa tena. Hautaenda ukisema huyu ananisumbua, huyu ananiingilia katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Tunamwabudu Mungu aliye mkuu zaidi ya ile mambo ambayo tunaona katika ulimwengu huu, zaidi ya macho yetu. Biblia inatuambia mkuni yule aliye ndani yako kuliko yule unayemuona. Na tunaye nguvu kupitia Kristo atupendae na atutiae nguvu. Mtumishi wa Mungu akasema ya kwamba it's not by might nor by power but by my spirit says the Lord. Sio kwa nguvu yako. Sio kwa pesa yako ukafika mahali umefika. Ni kwa neema ya Mungu. Haleluya. Ni kwa neema ya Mungu. Kwa hivyo nataka tuingie kwa maombi ili Mungu apate kututendea. Nataka tuombee biashara za watu wa Mungu, nataka tuombee ndoa za watu wa Mungu. Tuombe maisha ya watu wa Mungu ili wapate kuona mbele. Watoe ushuhuda kama vile wa last week walitoa ushuhuda. Na mimi najua wakati mwingi nimekuwa nikipigia Pastor Harrison ananiambia my sister I'm in church, I'm praying. I'm preparing for Wednesday service. Najua kwamba kuna watu wamekuwa wakijitayarisha kwa sababu ya siku ya leo. Na hata nasi pia Jana tulilala kuchelewa wiki hii yote tumekuwa tukilala kuchelewa kwa sababu ya siku ya leo. Na tunajua kwamba we are arresting every spirit of fear in your life. Today is the end of spirit of fear in your life. We are marking the end of it in your life. Toka katika hicho kidimbu ambacho umewekwa. Toka katika hilo pango ambalo umejijengea. Toka nje ili ukaweze kuona utukufu wa Mungu katika maisha yako. Naomba kwamba tutaendelea na kipindi hiki next Wednesday. Kwa sababu kuna vile Gideoni alidoubt the power of God. Akajiwekea great army. Akasema nataka niende na hawa watu maelfu ili tukaweze kukabiliana na kile kikosi. Lakini Mungu akasema sio kwa nguvu, sio kwa uwezo. Nataka upunguze hao watu. So next week tunakabiliana na spirit ya doubt ya kwamba yes god have spoken but i'm doubting lazima niende nikiwe nimejihami nataka mungu akuhami next week bwana yesu asifiwe kwa hivyo tunapoenda kuomba ningependa our brother utaombea marriages kisha ndugu yetu nikoshela taombea biashara za watu wa mungu wiki hii lazima tuone mavuno katika biashara zetu na pia mavuno katika marriages zetu. Haleluya. Na kuna wale walituma maombi wakasema ya kwamba dada Mary simama nasi kwa ajili ya magonjwa nitaombea magonjwa kisha baadaye mtumishi wa Mungu atakamilisha vile roho wa Mungu atamuongoza. Karibu sana ndugu Evans. Father in the name of Jesus I just worship you this wonderful evening my god being here is not in vain it's not that my god we do not have what to do but it's because you have permitted us oh jehovah it's because my god you have given us power and authority to be here that oh god we're gonna stand in the gap your people are encountering challenges. My father, your people are going through so much because of the situation, because the way the country is, because of the troubles around your people. My father, marriages, oh God, oh Jehovah, are shaken. Marriages, my father, there is no peace, oh my God. People are suffering. Oh Jehovah, that mama who is suffering, my God, because of oh Jehovah, of infidelity in the in 
in that house, in that family. My God, I set her free in the name of Jesus. Oh my God, that mama who is seeking, oh God, to be blessed with a baby. Oh Jehovah Jireh, I surrender her to you, my Father, that my God, you are God who gives, you are God who blesses, oh Jehovah, and in, oh God, you promised us, oh Jehovah, to go out and fill the earth. You blessed us to go and fill the earth, oh God. Jehovah, whatever the devil is using again is that womb. I now release your power in the name of Jesus. That my God, may you set her free. Those families that are struggling financially. Oh my Father, I pray that oh God, you are going to release your blessing. There is a financial breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ. That my Father, you are doing a new thing. That oh Jehovah, let those children not suffer because of that Father who is drunkard. Because of that Father who doesn't care. You are reaching out to them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my Father, because your people fear so much because of the situation. But my Father, you are setting them free now in the mighty name of Jesus. You are releasing that authority that, oh my God, as they walk out, they are going to be blessed. They are going to be, oh Jehovah, oh, live a loving life, my God, because you have set them free. And those that you set free, oh God, they are free indeed, my Jehovah. They are going to praise you. They are going to sing joys. They are going to sing for you. They are going to sing praises for you. Thank you, my Father. Because, oh God, you are redeeming that marriage. Thank you, my Father. Because of Jehovah, oh Father, people have suffered too much because of the parents of God of disagreeing on some principles of their lives. On some, oh my Father, I pray that, oh Jehovah, you intervene. I pray that, oh my God, let those children not suffer because of their parents, because of that plan, oh Jehovah, break up. My Father, let those children not suffer. My God, your God, oh Jehovah, who remembers your people because of that child, my God, remember that marriage, oh God, rebuild it anew in the mighty name of Jesus. Rebuild it anew in the mighty name of Jesus Christ reestablish now in the name of Jesus Christ thank you my God oh we worship you and we thank you my father because there's none like you. You are a wonderful God. And you are God who loves family. Oh Jehovah, that's why you proposed and sent your son Jesus Christ. To come my father and redeem us. So that oh God you may have a family. That's a church that you celebrate. That you are happy my father. To see us living together. And I want to see that family of Jehovah. Living together. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That planned divorce. I render it powerless in the name of Jesus Christ. That my father, you reestablish them now. That love, my God, you rekindle it now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my father, for you are worthy, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, thank you. Oh, Jesus. We bless your holy name, Lord. We exalt you, Jesus. Neno lako linasema Bwana wa majeshi umetupeni nguvu uweza mamlaka ya kufunga na kufungua Bwana wa majeshi kuna mtu biashara yake imejifunga Oh my god my god Nafungua hiyo biashara katika jina la Yesu katika neema ambayo umetupatia jioni ya leo Jehovah Bwana wa majeshi Mungu mwenye enzi unaahidi bariki kazi ya mikono ya watu wako ninafungua biashara ya mtu jioni ya leo katika jina la Yesu katika jina la Yesu kila aliye nena kinyume na kazi ya mikono yako aliye nena kinyume na kibanda yako aliye nena kinyume na kazi ya ofisi yako Bwana tunafunga hayo maneno jioni ya leo na tunaleta ukurasa mpya kwamba biashara yako kibanda yako inafunguka katika jina la Yesu Kristo tunaachilia neema ya ufanisi katika kazi ya mikono yako tunaachilia kazi ya ufanisi katika kazi ya ofisi yako wewe unaifanya kazi ya nyumba ninakutabiria kazi hiyo ya nyumba inafanikiwa na inakupatia mkate itakusimamisha itakupeleka hatua katika 
jina la Yesu Kristo. Asante Bwana maana unasema neno lako halikuji likakurudia bure. Neno hili halitakurudia bure. Neno hili limehubiriwa hapa. Hiyo neema Bwana haitaenda bure. Kuna mtu anafunguka Bwana. Kuna mtu anasaidika. Kuna mtu namshughulikia. Awashughulikie watu wako. Watasamaji wetu wote ambao wametufuatilia na watakao kuja nyuma yetu kutufuatilia. Tunaachilia hiyo neema umetuachilia kwayo. Bwana ikawafikilie katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Asante Bwana wa majeshi. Wewe ni mkuu. Ubariki kazi yao. Ubariki kazi ya mikono yetu. Wabariki wote ambao watajihusisha na kazi hii. Asante kwa dada wetu ambaye umetuma tu ujumbe wa kusupport kazi hii hapa. Baba tunazungumza neema juu yake. Tunazungumza neema juu yake. Amani iwe na moyo wake. Jamii yake ipate utulifu. Kazi yake ipate amani katika jina la Yesu jambo jipya lifanyike katika biashara hiyo jambo jipya lifanyike katika kazi ya mikono yake katika jina la Yesu Kristo ninaomba na hata kuamini amen amen wacha tuombe kwa ajili ya roho ya magonjwa mtakatifu mwaminifu wewe ni Mungu hatujawaiona mwingine kama wewe hata ije garika hata yaje mawimbi Baba, as long as our houses are built in the foundation of Jesus Christ, hatujawahi tingizika. Hatujawahi baba fiekwa. Hatujawahi fagiliwa na garika ya dunia hii. My God, I want to say thank you. Because you say when the enemy comes like a flood, your spirit will always raise a standard against it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, tonight, oh God, I am praying that your spirit will raise a standard against every evil spirit of diseases and sicknesses in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Sickness you have no part in our bodies in the name of Jesus Christ. As I speak the word of God into that life by the stripes of Jesus we are healed katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Magonjwa yale ambayo yanaleta uoga ya kwamba tukipatana na haya magonjwa hatutakuwa tena tunakaa na marafiki zetu hatutakuwa tena tunakaribiana na watu wenzetu kutakuwa na isolation katika maisha yetu inaleta ugonjwa katika familia ya kwamba ugonjwa huu kikuja familia iko katika hatari baba hayo magonjwa jioni ya leo ninakataa kila nguvu zake zote ninavunja kila ngome zake zote katika jina la Yesu Kristo magonjwa yanayokuja baba kuleta separation katika familia magonjwa yanayoleta chuki yanayoleta umasikini yanayoleta ukosefu katika familia yawe yametumwa yawe yametoka kuzimu yawe yametoka na yametokana na upepo unaovuma tunakemea yote katika jina la Yesu Kristo yakapate kushindwa na tunatangaza kwa damu ya Kristo tumepokea uponyaji na kwa mapigo yake zote tumepona jina lako linuliwe jina lako libarikiwe asante kwa ajili ya huyo mtoto ambaye hajatembea maana unaenda kumtembeza huyo mtoto ambaye ako na miezi tisa na anakaka na kwamba ni mtoto wa miezi mbili ama tatu tunamtabiria jioni ya leo ya kwamba anapokea afya katika mifupa yake na anaanza kutambaa na kutembea katika jina la Yesu Kristo maana hakuna ugonjwa ambao Mungu huwezi kuponya na hakuna maradhi yasiyotibika mbele zako asante Mungu wetu ni kwa sababu uwezo na nguvu na mamlaka ziko kwako na pia nakumbuka dada yangu aliyetuma ujumbe ya kwamba kuna mtu anaye aliye na deni lake naomba kwamba jioni ya leo hilo deni mwenye yuko na hilo deni baba utambariki na pesa na pia atakapopata pesa hata zifanyia kazi yoyote bali atapata kumulipa dada deni lake hata kuwa na amani mpaka aweze kulipa hilo deni katika jina la Yesu Kristo na hayo yote yanapotendeka baba utukufu na sifa tunakurudishia maana sio kwetu bali ni kwako bwana winuliwe na uabudiwe na ni kwa Kristo Yesu tunaomba na takuamini amen thank you Jesus. father in the name of Jesus yes, lord. lord we give you glory and we give you honor 
the God of Gideon, the God of Abraham, and the God of Moses. Lord, we seek you tonight. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Forgive us all our sins, O King of glory. Lord, we may have gone astray. We may have done things that are not of faith. Lord Jesus, we seek you to have mercy. I pray that you sanctify us with the precious blood of Jesus. Every sin we have committed in the spirit, in the soul, and in the body, without knowing and with, uh, through knowing, Lord, we seek you to forgive us. We may have done things that are not worthy. We may have gone astray from your will, like the children of Israel in the book of Judges, and that made the enemy to have power over them, O oh Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive us, O oh Lord. Forgive each and every person, the people who have gone astray to an extent of worshipping idol, to an extent of worshipping witchcraft, to an extent of worshipping even things that are not God. Father, forgive us. You are going to restore us again. You are going to heal us again. It doesn't matter how far we have been. Lord, you are able to restore us through the cross. Restore your children. Restore your church. Restore your people. That they may see the glory again. Father, I know that you are able to deliver us, O oh Lord. Every battle in our life. Every battle in our family. Every battle at the place of work. Every battle even in our churches. Lord, you are able to fight that battle. And I pray that who, every person who is watching, whatever he's going through right now, those people that have been facing rejection, the people that have been facing a lot of warfare in the spirit and even in physical, Lord, you are able to deliver them. Fight that battle for them. Fight that war for them. In the name of Jesus Christ, every war that has been raised against them, every person that has been standing against your people, my Father, I declare they are defeated right now. They are defeated right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we arrest every spirit of darkness. We arrest every demon of, uh, 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 of confusion, every demon of sickness, every demon that has been engaging warfare upon the minister of God. Father, Lord, we come against it. We rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we have those people who are afraid because of the challenges that have been facing my father. Give them the heart of courage. Give them strength and ability to overcome that condition in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare peace. I declare grace. I declare deliverance upon each and every person. My father, you are going to deliver your people and they are going to see the grace and the deliverance of your hand. We thank you so much because of each and every person who has been watching my father. Let your glory shine upon their life. We bless you and we worship you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 So we bless the Lord, our sisters, our brothers, our viewers, wherever you are. We say thank you for your time. Thank you for your bundles. God bless you. God add you more and more. May God prosper you. May the spirit of fear come out of you. May you see the prosperity of God, the success of God. May God take you to your destiny in Jesus' name. Till we meet again on Wednesday. God be with you. Shalom, shalom. Amen.